Hi, this is Ian Kearney. I'm the Vice President of People and Organisation and I'm really delighted to introduce Dr. Brent Lee to the Clinician's Cafe today. Thank you. Welcome. Great to be Welcome. here. Welcome. It's great. You've had a wonderful career at Napa. You've been with Napa since 2002, so you've seen a great deal of change. Right. But more recently, you've moved into a new role in January of last year. Can you tell me a little bit about the role that you've moved into? Right. So um, just almost a little less than two years, um, started in this role uh, full-time in the quality department and really excited um, to be moving from you know a clinician to um, uh, a, a chief role and then really being able to sort of parlay my passion into quality and patient safety in this full-time role. Um, really what I see myself as is really a support to all of our providers, right. um, really being sort of a resource for all of them. Before we sort of get into the roles, uh, how did you find that transition, moving from clinical into really a different kind of a role? How was that transition for you? You know, being a, a, a clinician and certainly being a chief, I've always been involved in, yes. in quality and in my role also in um, FOA, which is the group that we were in before we joined NAPA, um, also had sort of a larger role in, in quality and performance improvement. Um, so uh, really being able to sort of take that into a full-time position um, was really exciting uh, for me. Of course, I, I do miss the, the hands-on clinical work, nice. um, but, but really feeling like I'm impacting and making a difference, um, hopefully from, from this end, um, is, is really rewarding as well. Fantastic. Well, we're really, really happy that you're in the space, and I think it certainly helps by bringing your clinical experience into the space in particular. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the role a bit more. I, I think clinician and patient care was a very, very big part of this year's Clinical Leadership Summit. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the key initiatives that really are a part of your agenda you know, currently and going forward? Right. So I, I think what we've really tried to do is do a lot of education around a lot of the new MIPS measures. Okay. And I think we all know that you know a, a lot of sort of what is required of us is doing MIPS reporting for government CMS reporting. Mm -hmm. um, but what we hope to do is really uh, use that to really make improvements in patient care. That the measures that we're supporting and the measures that we're, we're, we're doing for government reporting, hopefully that's truly translating into actually better care for our patients, right. whether it's um, doing multimodal analgesia, whether it's doing um, higher risks for post-operative nausea, mm -hmm. and really trying to, to hit that and make an improvement in in uh, reducing nausea in our patients. Are you seeing any early results from some of that work? So it's it's a little bit early to start seeing some of the results, although we're just now sort of getting that data in. Right. I, I hope that in the next you know month or two that we actually will be able to analyze that data and actually see that we're making a difference right. in those things. Um, the other big initiative that we have uh, rolled out this year is, of course, the anesthesia risk right. alert. That's a low um, profile. And, and that is something that is really a NAPA-initiated project. Right. It's not something that the government is mandating for us. It's something that we internally in NAPA have identified um, high-risk clinical situations right. and really are trying to encourage our providers to, to do a better job by doing secondary yeah. consultations and by actually being present for some of the higher-risk um, intubation, extubation uh, situations. So what sort of res um, feedback have you had so far with regards to the anesthesia risk alert initiative that we're taking in, in um, NAPA from the clinician? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's something that you know, we were concerned that people would feel that this is sort of being imposed on them. Right. But I think the, the feedback that we're getting and what we had actually heard in some of our pilot sites where, we, mm -hmm. where this was done before we initially rolled this out throughout all of Napa is that this is really sort of changing a culture. Um, it's promoting a, a culture where we're working together to cooperate and improve the care of the patients that, that we care for. Um, so I, I do think it's actually being received in the, in the manner which we had intended it to be, which is really encouraging our providers to work together to actually um, to, you know, do well for the patients. Fantastic. Well, you know, one of the things we've also talked a little bit about is, is our clinicians and our clinician wellness. And so I, I know you've been thinking about that um, as well in terms of how do we support our clinicians which ultimately helps us with our patients as well. Right. So can you, can you give me some thoughts around you know, the, 
Where do you see that going for Napa? Yeah, so one of the things in, in, in my role in really being uh, in patient safety okay. has really been able to look at a lot of the adverse events that um, happen around the organization. And one thing that we've identified in, in a number of situations is you know, sometimes when these events occur, um, they're challenging, not only, of right. course, for the patient, the providers, but but it does have an effect on the provider. Right. Um, you know, when you lose a patient, when it's a, a unexpected death, um, a, a really bad complication, this does have an effect on the well, well-being of, of our providers. And I think it's something that we in Napa really want to address. And so I think having a CLS, which talked about provider wellness, yes. um, I think what we're looking at is trying to roll out a care for the caregivers program. That's fantastic. So I'm really pleased to hear that. Well, look, I really want to thank you for taking the time. Um, it was great to speak to Dr. Lee. And Dr. Lee is our Director of Clinical Excellence and Performance Improvement. And we're so happy to have you in the organization. We're thank so you. happy that you're doing the work that you're doing. And thank you for taking the time with us today. Great. Thank you. Good night.